Assalamu alaikum. We are back with our program about Canadian taxes. I am your host, Abish Khanzada, and we have our guest, Mr. Malik Hamid Iqbal. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. We will be continuing our discussion about RRSP today. Uh, but before we do that, let me introduce Mr. Malik to you. He is very highly qualified in his field and very highly experienced as well. He's associated with M&N &N Chartered Accountants, Inc. So let's learn a little bit about his firm before we go ahead with RRSP. M&N Associates Chartered Accountants is a full service accounting firm. And uh, we have designated accountants in our team and IT professionals. When we were conducting, uh, I'll go back uh, to this program now, mm -hmm. that uh, when we started this program, mm -hmm. the idea was that what should we provide to our community? And uh, this is what we decided that since tax season is coming, so we should provide information or main guidelines mm -hmm. to our community. That was the purpose. Right. But when our viewers are going to use this these techniques mm -hmm. or these guidelines, mm -hmm. they should seek professional help. Right. And uh, why I say that, because each situation is different. Mm -hmm. Each small business has got a different system. Mm -hmm. And similarly, small uh, uh, self-employed people, each person's information is different. Right. So to get maximum out of this, mm -hmm. they should seek uh, professional help. And that is what I would suggest mm -hmm. that when they are, and they can call us as well. Our number is 647-299-3956. It is coming on the screen as well. Mm -hmm. Our services include corporate taxes mm -hmm. for small businesses and self-employed people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do individual taxes as well. We provide bookkeeping and payroll services to our uh, clients, mm -hmm. GST, HST return, mm -hmm. new business setup, and business plan making, audit representation. Uh, if CRA is doing audit of some any company, mm -hmm. any of the clients, we help them to generate that information so that CRA gets the information correctly, mm -hmm. and the clients' records are also straight forward. Right. So that is what we do mm -hmm. uh, for our clients. M and N Chartered Accountant Inc. is a full service accounting firm as we learned. You can contact Mr. Malik at 647-299-3956 or you can email him at taxes.can at gmail.com. Our program today, we will continue discussing RRSP uh, where we left off last time and then after that we will be discussing some miscellaneous family tax situations. So let's go ahead with our program. Sure. Uh, in the last program, we discussed RRSP, mm -hmm. uh, what is the uh, room and what is excess right. uh, contribution, what is uh, uh, unused mm -hmm. contribution and all that. Now today, I think I want to touch base on spousal RRSP. Sure. Spousal RRSP, anybody can buy it mm -hmm. for spouse and it is it, this again uh, provides uh, information or is, uh, benefit or, uh, uh, or uh, uh, any taxpayer can transfer his money mm -hmm. to his spouse without any tax implications. Right. So if somebody buys spousal RRSP, mm -hmm. so, but the tax benefit would be given to the person who has contributed it. Okay. So whatever tax uh, deferral is, mm -hmm. it would be for the person who has contributed it. But once it is done, the property, the uh, RRSP becomes the property of the spouse. So that is, so it means the whole money is now transferred to the spouse. The spouse. Mm -hmm. And if spouse, after a certain period of time, if spouse wants to withdraw that, mm -hmm. so that would be taxed in her income, okay. not, uh, not uh, the income of the person who contributed. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, uh, the benefit mm -hmm. that uh, they can transfer mm -hmm. the whole thing mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it enables the taxpayer to transfer money to his uh, uh, wife or his spouse. Mm -hmm. But at the same time when somebody is putting money in RRSP for his spouse, this does not actually make his room bigger. Okay. It, his room would be still same. Mm -hmm. For example, if somebody has a $10,000 room mm -hmm. in his RRSP, he can buy that. 
and he buys five thousand or four thousand dollars for his spouse. Mm -hmm. So that four thousand dollars would be in spouse name, mm -hmm. but it does not mean that he can now increase his from ten thousand. He can buy four thousand more for on his name. Right. The limit would still be same, mm -hmm. but this four thousand would not increase his limit. limit. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, something which is to be considered. We have a question. Um, Arvinder wants to know that her husband has contributed uh, towards spousal RRSP and she's wondering if the income would be attributed to herself or her husband. It is. Uh, uh, she's uh, asking about attribution rules. Right. So uh, this we discussed it in uh, our uh, uh, investment income uh, program mm -hmm. that uh, if somebody buys any stock investment mm -hmm. and uh, then income when the uh, for example somebody buys stock mm -hmm. in his wife's name and uh, the dividend is declared this dividend would be charged or would be added to the person who has paid for this it will not be his spouse right but in rrsp it is different in RRSP, the income, whatever is generated, mm -hmm. it would be spousal income mm -hmm. and it would grow there. So it would remain in spousal's name, mm -hmm. it would grow there mm -hmm. and whenever after a certain period of time or at retirement, whatever, let's say uh, this in spousal RRSP, mm -hmm. $5,000 were spent and uh, at the time of retirement or after 20 years, that 5000 has become 40000 right. That will not be traced back to his her husband it would be her income and oh, okay. it would be she has to pay taxes on that right. okay. so it will not be attributed to her husband okay uh, before we take a break if we can learn a little bit about other places where we can use rrs uh, rrsps uh, oh okay uh, we can use rrsp uh, mm -hmm. uh, government allows that people who are first time home buyers mm -hmm they can use this RRSP, they have to fill a form mm -hmm. T1036 mm -hmm. that has to be filled and sent to uh, uh, CRA, mm -hmm. CRA approves it and then they can send this form to the bank where they have our insurance company mm -hmm. where they have invested in RRSP. Mm -hmm. So they would give the money without any deductions, oh, excellent. without any deductions. So they would give it back mm -hmm. and uh, this loan has to be or this withdrawal mm -hmm. has to be paid back in 15 years time okay so that has to be done but it this is again a very good benefit mm -hmm. that they want to buy mm -hmm. a house they can use that rrsp which was not taxed exactly they can use that rrsp for buying the house or down payment of the house and then they can there is a limit mm -hmm. on that how much they can withdraw but with that limit they can withdraw and uh, then uh, they can they have to repay it within 10, 10 15 years okay. there is another mm -hmm. uh, benefit mm -hmm. rrsp can be used for lifelong learning okay so if somebody wants to do some courses or some special courses which mm -hmm. he wanted to increase his knowledge or learn something he can take the money from rrsp again he has to fill the information mm -hmm. and uh, ask the uh, CRA they would allow but in home it is almost like a home buyer plan mm -hmm. but uh, home buyer plan is to be the money has to be returned back in 15 years mm -hmm. and here it would be returned back in 10 years so this is the difference mm -hmm. otherwise it is tax free and but it has to be returned back Excellent. that is so we'll take a short break. We will take a question after we come back and we will be discussing TFSAs as we return right before we go into our next topic. So stay with us. Welcome back. Let's discuss a little bit more about uh, the topic that we are discussing. We have a question about RRSPs. Mr. Kulkarni and his wife, they want to make a down payment on a house. It is their first house and they're buying it together. Um, Kul Mr. Kulkarni has $60,000 in his RRSP and his wife has another 45000 45, in her RRSPs. And they're wondering that since the house is going to be on both of their names, mm -hmm. 
can both of them withdraw their RRSP money or can only one of them withdraw it? They can both withdraw to the maximum. Mm -hmm. The maximum is uh, given by CRA. Okay. So up to that limit, mm -hmm. yes, they can withdraw and Excellent. they can use that money for RRSP. That is not an issue. They can buy it their they can enjoy their house. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So this is uh, now uh, um, we discussed uh, lifelong learning uh, right. uh, as well in, uh, earlier mm -hmm. and now we briefly touch base on uh, TFSA. Sure. Now TFSA is the benefit or facility given by the government mm -hmm. that if they invest in, in, if they put money in TFSA and then they buy any investment, mm -hmm. the money goes, increases tax free. Excellent. So that is also a very good right. opportunity. So people do invest and uh, government has given mm -hmm. uh, a limit and they let everybody know that okay this much is everybody's whoever is investing is limit mm -hmm. and they can buy up to that amount mm -hmm. and then they can invest anywhere and they can ma make money on that. Excellent. Cost of borrowing for TFSA mm -hmm. is also not deductible. Okay. It is similar that uh, investment for investment purposes, mm -hmm. yes, if it is outside of RRSP and TFSA then mm -hmm. it is deductible, interest expenses, otherwise it is not deductible. So if somebody buys, if he has a room for TFSA, $50,000 mm -hmm. and he goes to the bank and buys uh, for, uh, takes loan, mm -hmm. the interest expense ha is not deductible. Okay. So that is uh, uh, one thing which uh, we have to be careful right. that these expenses, but yes, TFSA, whatever is earned, it is tax-free. Excellent. So that is, uh, Excellent. Uh, we continue on the next. Yeah, so uh, our next topic is miscellaneous family situations when it comes to tax. So what are the different things that we will be discussing in that? Uh, marriage and separation. Okay. Uh, now marriage, usually, um, it is uh, when they are filing tax returns. Mm -hmm. After getting ma married, uh, usually female partners, they change their name. Right. So they have to tick or they have to uh, say yes mm -hmm. in the question mm -hmm. that they have changed their name. Right. Or if, uh, uh, if they marry or they change the status from single to common law, mm -hmm. they have to mention that as well in tax. Because there are a number of things which are determined on the basis of family. Right. So once they say that they are married, mm -hmm. it becomes a family. Right. Before that, if they were single, mm -hmm. then the uh, rules are different. Okay. So that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, then similarly, then uh, when somebody is married, there is a common law. Then uh, another thing which is also um, bitter, that separation. Mm -hmm. Separation also happens in some cases. Mm -hmm. So in separation, uh, the CRA definition is that it is breakdown of the relationship. Okay. It is not a separation of that, okay, husband is living in a different place and uh, wife is living in a different place because of the job requirements. Right. Or because of uh, any other requirement, but there is no uh, breakdown of relationship. Mm -hmm. That is not considered as separation. Okay. Separation is when there is no communication, there is no uh, mutual uh, talk or something. Mm -hmm. So that is separation. If it, the, it is breakdown, mm -hmm. complete breakdown, mm -hmm. and it can be uh, through court order, mm -hmm. through mutual agreement, mutual consent, or written agreement. So it could be uh, any way. I mean, it has to be that okay. Uh, it has to be that uh, the uh, the relationship has to break. Okay. Then it is um, separation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when separation happens, then uh, again the name change right. has to be applied. Now there are some fees mm -hmm. which are incurred. They are deductible or not deductible, we can uh, touch base on that, mm -hmm. that there are certain fees which are deductible. For example, uh, when separation happens, then mm -hmm. support uh, is paid by the husband or wife to other spouse. Mm -hmm. So if they want to get 
uh, support and mm -hmm. they go to the court and uh, there are some legal fees and all that or they talk to a lawyer and there are some fees, they are deductible okay. for getting support, mm -hmm. uh, for collecting support mm -hmm. or if this uh, support has to be reassessed, mm -hmm. that support was previously thousand dollars, now it has to be, it should be 1500 mm -hmm. or 1200, then they approached the court and then court decides mm -hmm. that legal fee is also deductible. Okay. So that legal fee is uh, deductible. Mm -hmm. If it is not mentioned that uh, what support is, it should be mentioned that okay this much is child support and this much is spousal support. Mm -hmm. If otherwise it would all be considered as child support and ch child support is non-taxable okay. in the hands of the person who receives it. Right. So that is not uh, deductible, uh, not taxable. Mm -hmm. And non-deductible expenses when we look at it, uh, we are going uh, in the same line that uh, if separation, if processing the separation or divorce, mm -hmm. whatever legal fees are there, mm -hmm. they are not deductible. Okay. They are not, uh, for support, yes, for getting support, yes, that is deductible. Mm -hmm. But for filing uh, uh, for divorce, or separation, mm -hmm. that is not deductible. Similarly, visitation charges for the child or mm -hmm. custody, mm -hmm. uh, that is also not deductible. Okay. These are uh, some charges. Then uh, I would like to touch base with adoption expenses. Um, actually, our program time is almost up. Um, if we can continue with the adoption expenses and other miscellaneous uh, charges or other miscellaneous family situations in our next program. I really appreciate that. Sure. So I hope you learned a lot today about RRSP, TFSA and uh, spousal marriage and separation issues. We'll be discussing more miscellaneous family tax issues next program on Monday at 9 p.m. at Iawaz. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Malik. You can Thank contact you. Mr. Malik at 647-299-3956. Or you can email him at texas.can at gmail.com. Thank you very much. See you next week.